Millions of American families have their immigrant stories begin in New York City. And the Tenement Museum on the Lower East Side was founded to tell those stories. They displayed documents and artifacts from the people who actually lived in this building from the 1860s onward. But when the museum began restorations in the late 1980s, they soon discovered that the building had even more stories to tell. And this building was built in 1863 and uh, was inhabited until 1935. It was essentially condemned in 1935. And the room we're in here, one of the apartments on the second floor of the building, is left in the state that the museum rediscovered it in, in 1988. After that point, the building had been essentially vacant since 1935, so some 53 years. So what kind of families lived in this building over those years? The folks who called this building home between that, that broad period, between 1863 and 1935, were all European immigrants. There were some Irish families, Irish immigrant families who lived here in that same period, uh, but predominantly German. So German, in fact, was this neighborhood uh, at the time that it was known as Klein Deutschland or Little Germany. Fast forward to the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. And this is a mostly Eastern European Jewish immigrant building. Ashkenazi Jews from what you would think of then as the Russian Empire, and some Italians as well. The largest kind of immigrant groups that are arriving in the United States in those two general periods. This building kind of reflects that larger story and in some ways is kind of like a microcosm or a lens into a much sort of larger immigrant narrative about how immigrants have arrived and shaped not only the Lower East Side, but of course New York more broadly and, and the United States by extension. In the basement of 91 Orchard Street, just a few doors down from 97, is where they keep the artifacts they found when they did the renovation of the original building. People always love the doll oh, heads. Ah, baby heads! Okay. So what kind of things do we have down here? The objects that are part of the museum's permanent collection, and that's how we really sort of distinguish the things that we've sort of found that have kind of direct provenance to 97 Orchard Street or its former residents or shopkeepers or building owners. Uh, that's how we sort of distinguish in terms of terminology from the things that we've actually gone out and purchased, all of which are antique to sort of recreate a lot of those apartment spaces. We used to tell the stories of various immigrant families who called 97 Orchard Street home. And we keep both of those collections here. Quite a few of the things that we hold here in you know, one of the museum's collection storage facilities are the heart of that permanent collection, if you will. And they really run the gamut from things that are associated with play Right? You know, can imagine sort of children having some of these things or things that they might have used in cooking, uh, medicine bottles, really sort of runs a spectrum of different kinds of items uh, left behind, discovered under floors or within ceilings, etc. One of the things that I think is really sort of interesting is, um, and it's really difficult to see in there, and you know, we're not uh, able to open the bag, but if you can kind of peer right in there, it, these are um, sort of a bag filled with dried or sort of they desiccated look, raspberries. Yeah, if you can see the little the little pips in there. Yeah. So they at least had raspberries. Right. So raspberries eating fresh fruit. Maybe they were buying these from the kind of the push cart markets. Um, right over there at the corner. I don't know if you can sort of the box on the bottom, not the corn cob, but the uh, the other one right there is um, the remains of somebody's bagel. Huh. I mean, it looks like it was just thrown away yesterday, right? And we discover that's another place that we often discover some of these things is in um, all of the kind of the ash that's left in some of the fireplaces, right, in the building. And we believe those fireplaces weren't used as open sort of fireplaces like you might have in some folks' home. Mm -hmm. uh, today, they were generally used um, to sort of vent the cast iron coal burning stoves, right? But you know, that was found in, in all of that ash, uh, which to me, it's right, right, like the ash probably wicked away all of the moisture and it wasn't, a, you know, it didn't sort of decay in the same way if it had just been sort of like out in the open uh, because it looks like, right? It looks like I could see that on the street today. Yeah. Somebody just doesn't finish their bagel. Right. <laughs> right.
folks will often ask me like, what is my favorite object in the museum's collection? This one in particular here, uh, which is, as you can see, a can of Durkee curry powder. And this is always really sort of interesting to me, right? Because, um, you know, seems to date from say the early 20th century, at least by the look of it. And so that kind of intrigued me, like what is a can of curry powder doing in a building that's home to mostly East European Jewish immigrants? Uh, I had an intern, a really fantastic intern, and one of the things I said to her is, find out what's up with this curry powder can. Uh, and she did an amazing sort of amount of research that really suggested that there was, this dated from the 1920s, uh, and that there was a kind of widespread kind of mass consumer uh, curry craze, if you will, in the 1920s, and that clearly immigrants on the Lower East Side in this particular building were participating in mass consumer culture, adopting these new sort of food ways, maybe incorporating that into some of what they were cooking, the kinds of food traditions they brought. You know, the negotiation between maintaining traditions, adapting to life in your new home, and really sort of, you know, that from that comes, right, like what's American food. I feel like that's a very quintessentially American story where people think that people come here and they bring their food with them. You know, Italians come here, they bring their food with them, but it's actually more complicated than that because they're still participating in what is becoming an American culture. Absolutely. Much more blended than we thought. History is more than just a series of events, and the people who lived in 97 Orchard are more than just figures of the past. They were the immigrants whose families became America, and the evidence of their lives exists in what they left behind in the floorboards, and now the basements at the Tenement Museum.